this is a cracking book. And it's also, um, you know, because it says, I love the ones of you, my father in the making of me. And a lot of it is about your, your dad. Yeah. What a man. <laughs> yeah, yeah, he was... What a um, remarkable guy. Yeah, very much a man of his class. Yeah. Uh, very, very bright man. Very, very hard working, but um, not given the opportunities that I've been given. See, I identified with so much of this book. It was quite extraordinary. It really was, especially what you say about class. Yeah. You know, because sometimes, and, and you know that sometimes you've got a reputation of being a bit chippy mm -hmm. because you stood up for yourself. Yeah. But because of where you're from and your background, you were called chippy rather than assertive. Or... Well, well, that's the class system in Isn't action. It? It's, it if you're really a working is. class person and you speak out, oh. then you're chippy. So who's defining exactly. what is chippy? And I would say it's the likes of... Boris Johnson and yeah. the Bullingdon Club. No, exactly. It's so it's so interesting on so many different levels. And like I said, incredibly honest. And I think about you as a wee boy, what you must have been about six and you looked in the mirror and you didn't like what you saw? Yeah, I was very critical. Yeah. Uh, I remember seeing photographs of myself and I was critical of my body composition right. from a very young age. I don't know whether that was to do with my identical twin brothers. I, I grew up with identical twin brothers, which I think's can can yeah. make you compare mm, and you can say, well, where's my twin? Uh, it might be pop, pop psychology, but yeah, I, I, think, I think eating disorders uh, are often about perfection, mm. uh, an unrealistic idea of how we should look. Uh, yeah. So I think perhaps it was going on there. You can, I was thinking you can look better, you can look better. Right. Uh, Pre-puberty, so it's... Gosh, I had no idea you were going through that. I well, it's like the drama no of being idea. a child. We don't really know yeah, what yeah. children are. I've got a six-year-old and a seven-year-old. Mm. Do we really know how they're perceiving the world? And... No, you don't, especially now. No. You really, really don't. It's mm. scary. I mean, it could have blinked and killed you, though. Yeah, you it, yeah, yeah, it could. Um, it's, it's incredible that you're here. I mean, you've got that sort of inner steel, I guess, that might come from your dad, because he was like that. Mum and Dad, yeah, yeah both. they were both born in the 20s and the 30s, uh, lived through the Depression, then yeah, pre-war, immediately post-war. And there's a food thing there, of course. You know, That's their attitude true. to food probably yeah. informed my attitude to food. Um, what sort of reaction have you had, Christopher, to the book? What have people been saying to you? I've been taken aback. Yeah. Uh, because I get stopped. Obviously, I'm used to being stopped in the street about... <laughs> The acting work, but yeah. people are now stopping me and saying, thank you for speaking about depression. I'm not surprised. Thank you for speaking about anorexia, dementia. I mean, it doesn't sound like there's a lot of laughs in the book, but I've, I've tried to do it. No, it's, tried it... to do it in a hum yeah. human way. Um, and I, it caused a bit of a wobble a couple of weeks ago with some of the issues that right. are in the book. The intensity and doing things like this, talking about it on television. I understand that completely. You do, because yeah, of course. your weight, in a sense, has been an issue on the show. And yeah. yeah, no, we've talked about that a lot. You, you know, so there's a pressure there. Yeah. And we spoke earlier about I was being rewarded within the industry for looking a certain way, but to get that way, I had to do certain yeah, things, which, which led to... You know, mental health issues. God, it's, I mean, it, you, you just never, you know what, you know what this has really taught me reading your book? You never know what's going on in other people's lives. Yeah, you don't. You really don't. You've got no idea. Don't assume. And I think when I eventually, I left the first series of The A Word and went straight to hospital because I had a severe clinical depression. Mm. And I think that, I've lost my thread here, but I think that has, has taught me to mm. not assume. No, exactly. And because not I would, to judge. I would never have known. I mean, I, I love the E-word and it's coming back, isn't it? You've just done a... It is in the in the new year. We've good, just filmed good. the third series. Yeah, Morris's. and I loved your character in that, although sometimes I want to shake him. Yeah, <laughs> but like most of the women in his life. <laughs> I know, I know, yeah. but it's such a good series. So well written and so, so, so Peter well done. Peter Bowker. But, uh, brilliant writer. But no idea that you were going through all of that? Just no, no idea what was all? interesting on the first series, it, it really started to manifest itself, the first series, the, the, the breakdown. Yeah. Uh, and what I noticed was when I was on set and I put on Morris's costume, I know this sounds silly almost, but when I put on Morris's costume, I could do my job. Right. But then when I'd go back to the hotel room at night, that's mm. when the insomnia and the anxiety went through the roof and I'd get through the night on little sleep. Right. And it's that thing of the importance of a job to people. Yeah. My yeah. job kept me going. No, absolutely. So when you were him... 
it, it was actually all right. Pretending to be somebody else. Yeah. I mean, it's the the big acting mm. cliche, no, but it was true. the truth. No, absolutely, it was the truth. You talk still very movingly about your dad and about how he had to deal with Alzheimer's and how everyone else around about him had to deal mm. with that. And the fact that your mum really took care of him, the love between the two of them. Yeah, my mum cared, my mum cared for my dad for 12 years and she always said the worst day of her life was not when my dad died, but no. when she says when I had to put him in the home, but me and my brothers had to persuade her to do that mm. because the burden, on, oh, burden of much. care yeah. on carers, they're invisible, really. They save this country millions of pounds. They do. They get no credit. Um, so, yeah, Mum cared for him for, for at least 12 years through the oh. varying stages. God, it's extra and how are you now? How would you say you are now if you had to give yourself a health check or yeah. how you're doing? Well, I did have a wobble a yeah. couple of weeks ago. Uh, definitely, the, the pressure of it and the exposure of talking mm. in this way. I know, I know. It's, about it's very it. brave of you. And what have is. I done? You monetized sure. my personal life and how's it affected my mum and dad? But I think because I'm a parent, mm. I, they, Albert and Esme keep me very focused. Mm -hmm. And that's what happened to me in the hospital. The, the consultant, Justin Haslam, said to me, you know, if, if you were to take your own life, think of the legacy that would create for your children. Mm. Uh, and that woke me up, as did him telling me, explaining to me my brain chemistry right. in the way that a surgeon would explain somebody's broken sure. arm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He said, you've been in fight or flight mode, your brain is exhausted. And he actually... He took the curse of it and the taboo off mental health issues. That's one of the subjects of the book. No, it's incredible. It's Just to take the taboo away. Exactly.